Hi, I'm Andy Burrows here for PCT TV. I'm here with Dr. Raphael Schnervis, who's Clinical Solutions and Business Development Director at Opus. Thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. First up, I'd like to ask about virtual trials. Um, do you think they're realistic for the future? What are the advantages? What are the challenges that still need to be overcome? So actually, virtual trials are a huge challenge and created a lot of interest in the recent period. And they are an appealing solution to many aspects. So virtual trials, decentralized trials mean that we have not only an important and significant reduction to operational costs, overhead costs, travel costs, but we should ask ourselves the questions, what does it mean for the patient? So the patient is in the center of our clinical trials right. and the patient needs to be safeguarded. So the patient in this case, uh, uh, we, we know statistically that there is a higher retention and more compliance of patients because caregivers go home to the patients or wherever they are. So they can provide drug supply, they can uh, do sampling, they can collect some initial data and for sure the patient needs to be equipped and organized from an organizational logistic point of view but also for the capture of data eventually. And then we also know it is not only an advantage, so we need to take into account the risk for the patient. It's true that as far as the data of the patients are concerned, we do not have in this case an on-site source data verification. Um, the, depending on therapeutic indication of disease of the patient, so we need to put and to see the whole context. So in certain disease areas, probably it is not recommended. Mm -hmm. So at the end, I would say that the future, yes, uh, will be significantly changed by virtual trials, decentralized trials, but they are not replacing on-site managed trials. So I think there will be a mixed model. And real-world evidence, how important do you think that's, that is? And especially around that, data integrity is obviously very important as well. Real world evidence is very trendy, let's say, and I think I will be quite reluctant in my answer because we really need to understand what does it mean. What is real world evidence? What's, what does it mean to have real world data, data collection? Yeah. So um, for sure we mean that real world evidence traditionally is more, um, or more is happening more in late stage trials and the tendency is to bring it also to early phase development and this means also in this case to equip the patients. We all know that the patients are in the center of our trials and <laughs> without patients or the participation and the compliance we do not go anywhere. So um, this means to have more and more digitalized trials, this means to do data collection through digitalized or mobile devices, to, uh, through ePros, to social networks. Mm -hmm. So there are many, many um, innovative and new technology based uh, models to collect all the data. And this means we have more and more data and here the real challenge is what can we do with all this data. So we really need to learn to have a very scientific approach and methodology in uh, the data analysis. We need the resources and really specialized resources. So data manager and data, real data scientists right. who can manage and can deal with this huge amount and collection and uh, obviously the analysis of this data. I think it's also important to mention that there are differences. Differences in geographic areas. We have differences between US and uh, Europe. Probably um, the data standardization and integration efforts in US are more advanced. Probably also due to the fact that uh, Europe is a multi-country asset. So we have many national, a lot of national regulations, we have national health systems and probably it's more difficult to bring the heads and the leaders together to right. do the integration, standardization and harmonization of the approach. Okay, and I guess more generally, um, how do you see the CRO landscape changing? Yeah, due to the fact that all these assets within the clinical trials are changing. So all the COO landscape who is more and more involved in the trials. So we have more and more tendency that 
pharma um, developers or drug developers are outsourcing their trials. They are fully outsourcing their trials and they are not just going to one provider, um, but they go and ask one to provider to give him everything. So you have specialized companies, um, the bigger companies getting more and more bigger. So right. there are huge acquisition uh, processes ongoing. So yeah. probably at the end we will have less big players, but more and more providing broader um, service offerings. And this means that the smaller providers, uh, mid-sized companies or smaller companies need to specialize or need to be able to implement, complement um, their, their service offerings through integration of other vendors. And we need to become more and more specialized. So niche areas are requested. Um, we see that there are COOs specializing in therapeutic areas, in dermatology, pediatrics, or they combine. Um, and then in very new aspect that is needed and um, CROs are already um, going in this direction right. to be able to understand the whole drug development process. So we do not have just, okay, I bring your drug through all phases, but I see the whole picture, I see the whole drug development environment and to be able to, to integrate where, where services are needed. So a really, really high scientific approach is requested. All right, lots of change coming then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you.